Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving an interesting quartic equation. We have x to the fourth power plus x to the third power plus x squared plus x plus one equals zero, and we're going to be finding the solutions to this quartic equation. Quartic equations are not easy, easy to solve, there's a formula which kind of depends on a cubic, but even the cubic formula is not very pleasant. We're going to be using different methods, I'm going to present two different ways here. The first method. Okay, so I, I'm going to factor this equation. How am I going to factor it? I don't know what the factors are, but I'm going to find the factors. So I will write this equation as a product of two polynomials that are quadratic. They're going to look like this. x squared plus x plus 1 is one of them. And the other one is going to be x squared plus bx plus 1. Now, a and b can be the same or they can be different, in which case we have a perfect square even if they're the same. And again, these numbers can also be negative 1 and negative 1. If this doesn't work, we're going to try the negative 1 case. But anyways, let's go ahead and distribute everything, and then let's see what we get from here. So when we distribute, I notice that I get x to the fourth power, and then I'm going to be getting bx cubed, and then if I distribute x squared, then I get ax cubed, abx squared, and then ax. And if I distribute the 1, it should look like, you know, x squared plus bx plus 1. So let's go ahead and add it up and then see what that gives us. And we're going to set it equal to our original equation. So if you put together some of the like terms, x to the fourth power, now I have ax cubed and bx cubed, which means that uh, I should be getting a plus b quantity x cubed from here. And then I have x squared, which can be written as, you know, I have the ab x squared, x squared, and x squared is going to give me 2x squared. So that means I have ab plus 2 times x squared. And then I have the ax plus bx, which is a plus b times x. And finally, I have a 1 which obviously x to the fourth, we wrote it first. So now when you set this equation equal, equal to the original one, you're going to notice that the coefficients are going to be determined from here. So this is supposed to be 1 because the coefficient of x cubed here is 1. The coefficient of x squared is 1 also. So this is going to equal 1. And then this also verifies. If this doesn't work, of course, I can't factor it this way. But a plus b happens to be 1 as well, so it's verified one more time. And of course, our constant is going to be 1. Great. So everything seems to be working. Let's go ahead and find a and b here. We have two variables. Let's go ahead and find it. So we get a plus b equals 1 from here, and a b equals negative 2. Now, what does this tell you? This tells you that a and b are the roots of a quadratic equation. Let's call that, I don't know, maybe just write it as t squared. We can just write this equation as t squared, remember the Vieta's formulas, minus uh, the sum of the roots, which is 1, t minus the product, which is 2 equals 0. Now, when we get this equation, okay, well, obviously, we made a mistake here. AB does not equal negative 2. I just realized that AB plus 2 is equal to 1, so that means AB is equal to negative 1. So that gives us the quadratic equation t squared minus t minus 1 equals 0. Okay, from here we get the solutions by using the quadratic formula, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, which is 5 in this case, right? But of course that's a, an, you know, well, it's just square root of 5, so what am I talking about? Divide by 2, okay. So those are the roots, so basically we get two solutions from here. 1 plus root 5 over 2 and 1 minus root 5 over 2. Okay, so those are the t values, but they, they're also the a and b values. It doesn't matter which one is which because they're interchangeable. So we can basically say that our equation is factorable into this form. x squared, and then I'm going to write it as, you know, just um, plus minus with the expression. So it's going to look like this. 1 minus root 5 over 2. Notice that our equation was like this, a plus b, right? So it's x squared plus a. So notice that these are plus signs, so I'm just going to keep it as is. Uh, x squared plus 1 minus root 5 over 2x, and then it's going to be plus 1. That's going to be one of my equations, and then it's going to be multiplied by the other one, which is x squared plus again, because that was a plus sign. 1 plus root 5 over 2x plus 1 is equal to 0. So that's the, 
the factored form of my original equation, and obviously we have two quadratics which we can solve. And how do you solve these quadratic equations? That's going to be kind of interesting, and I'm going to be writing the solutions. But using the quadratic formula, you're going to be getting two, uh, four solutions from here because we get two quadratics, right? So the first one is going to give you x equals negative 1 plus minus, uh, actually that's not plus minus, plus square root of 5, and then we get the plus minus, you know, the square root of 10 plus 2 root 5, i divided by 4 that's going to be the solutions to the first quadratic and the second one is going to give us something similar you know it's uh, they're slightly similar so it's going to look like what am i doing it's good. so this is the first one and the second one is going to look like negative 1 minus root 5 so with slight changes plus minus the square root of 10 minus 2 root 5 i over 4 as you can see here our cortic has four complex solutions and that's perfectly normal because it's even okay great so this is the first method and let's go ahead and take a look at it from another perspective and then we'll compare those two solutions and hopefully you'll let me know about uh, your opinion as well okay so let's go ahead and look at the second method here our second method involves some interesting you know methods or I should say interesting ideas. Okay, so the second method uh, looks like the following. So I have the quartic, let me rewrite it. And this is an interesting quartic because everything is one here. Notice that all the coefficients are one, which tells us that this is kind of like a special quartic. Now, I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by x minus one. Of course, I have to assume first that x does not equal one because otherwise I'm multiplying both sides by zero, which is not okay. So if you multiply both sides by x minus 1, what happens? And you'll see in a little bit why I'm doing this, because it makes sense. Okay, so now if you multiply both sides by x minus 1, this is what you get. Now notice that this product gives you something super nice, and that is x to the fifth minus 1. If you distribute, you're going to you know, agree with me, hopefully. Now what is that supposed to mean? Well, we said that x does not equal 1, but x to the fifth equals 1. Well, isn't that kind of weird? Well, it's not, because if you think about complex solutions, one has five complex roots, five complex fifth roots. And of course, one of them is one, but we don't want that, right? We want the other four solutions, which are complex, and those are going to be the solutions. And what are they? Well, if you just go ahead and write this down, you're going to be getting something like x equals, you know, you know, if you write uh, one as... Uh, this as a you know as, as a complex number one can be written as cosine of 2 pi plus i sine 2 pi so what you can do here is basically divide the argument by 5 of course the um, modulus is always going to be 1 so you can basically say that the complex roots the fifth roots of this number is going to look like the following cosine of 2 pi over 5 plus i sine 2 pi over 5 of course, this is just one of the roots, and then you can just write cosine of 4 pi over 5 plus i sine 4 pi over 5. And we can just continue in this manner, keep writing the solutions by adding 2 pi over 5 every time. It's going to give you 6 pi over 5 plus i sine 6 pi over 5. And of course, there's a way to write it as e to the power i x equals cosine x plus i sine x. So you can just also write it as e to the power 2 pi over 5i. And every time you can just replace the 2 pi over 5 at the other angle. Okay, there's a shorter way to write it. And finally, our fourth solution is going to be this one. Okay, and these are again, the fifth roots of one, except for x equals one. And these are going to be all the solutions to our cortic. And this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.